time series, seasonal variation and moving averages. The two key components of a time series are trend and variation, both of which can be used to obtain a forecast. In this video we focus on seasonal variation and moving averages. Seasonal variation is a regular predictable pattern in the time series. For example, you would expect supermarket sales to be the highest on a Saturday and on a Sunday and lower during the week. That's an example of seasonal variation where you see a regular pattern in the data. Seasonal variation is not limited to the seasons of the year, so we're not just looking at winter, spring, summer, autumn. Now it can be difficult to see any underlying trend in the data when you have this pattern, this regular pattern in the data. So a moving average is calculated and the moving average will allow you to see any underlying trends in the data. In this time series data is collected twice weekly, so Monday and Friday there, Monday and Friday there, Monday and Friday here and so on. Because it's collected twice every week we're going to work out a two-point moving average. So take the first two data values, add them up, so that's 28, divide by 2, that's 14. And you write the 14 here. It should go in between these two values, right in the middle there. Okay, once you've done that, you move along once. So I've moved one value along, and you do exactly the same thing again. Take these two points here, work out their average. So add them up, that gives you 30, divide that by 2 because there's two values. So we have 15. And then do the same again. Add these two together, 26 plus 10, that's 36 and again work out the average of those numbers, 18, move along again, take these two points, add them up, that gives you a total of 40, divide by 2, that gives 20, and as we're going along, whenever you work out an average of two values, you always write down the average in between those values. And then the last two, 14 and 30, which will give you an average of 22. When the moving average values have been calculated, to plot them on a graph, take the first moving average value, and this value has to be plotted in between Monday and Friday. There's Monday, there's Friday, so the first value has to be plotted along here somewhere. I'm just going to make this up, let's say it's here. That's 14. The next moving average value is plotted in between Friday and Monday. So moving al along here, there's Friday, there's Monday, it has to go along here. The next one is between Monday and Friday, so again moving along. There's the next Monday and Friday in between those two. And then the next one is between Friday and Monday. There's Friday, there's Monday. And the last one there between Monday and Friday. There's Monday, there's Friday. Okay, so the position of these moving average points is key. If you plot them in the wrong place, then essentially what you've done is wrong and you will lose marks in the exam. 
so be very careful when it comes to plotting them because sometimes they line up with these major um, uh, scale marks here and sometimes they're in between like we've seen in this example in this example data is collected Monday, Wednesday, Friday Monday, Wednesday, Friday so there are three data values per week so we have a three point moving average because you've got three there and then you've got three here again and that will keep repeating Monday, Wednesday, Friday and so on so to work out the moving average values you take the first three data values add them up and then you divide by three to work out the average so we're doing this 8 plus 10 plus 14 divided by 3 because it's a three point moving average that gives you 10.7 so where do I write the moving average here is it there is it in between these where do you actually write the moving average value well there's three data values and right in the center is here so that's where you write down your moving average that you've just calculated and then you move one point to the right one data value to the right like this and you repeat the whole thing again so 10 plus 14 plus 16 there's three values there that we're working out the average of divide by 3 and that gives you 13.3 and right in the center of those three values is there so that 13.3 will go here and then again you move one step to the right like this again it's 14 plus 16 plus 18 divided by 3 gives you an average of 16 so these three values here, the middle is there and the moving average was 16 and then you move again to the right sixteen plus eighteen plus twenty two divided by three and that gives eighteen point seven and that eighteen point seven goes here so every time we've taken three data values and we have worked out the average of those three because we're doing a three point moving average here now this would be wrong if you moved again like this and then you thought alright I'll add up these two numbers and then I'll divide that's wrong it's a three point moving average you must have three data values to work out the average of once you find that you can no longer continue so from this point onwards you can't continue any further you stop so it's quite normal to have a gap here and here when working out moving averages when you plot these moving averages on a graph this example is easier that first moving average value goes with the Wednesday here the second one goes with the Friday so you can easily line them up so if you have your graph like this so you've got your time axis here Monday Wednesday Friday so that's week one this is week two ten point seven the first moving average value is plotted with the Wednesday there so let's say that value was here the next one goes with Friday there's the Friday the next moving average value goes with Monday and the last one here goes with Wednesday in this example we look at a four point moving average 
So four data values will be taken at a time. So to work out a four point moving average, you add up your data values. So that's four of those, these four here, and then you divide by four. So that's the average. The middle of these four values, right in the center, is here. That's where you write down that moving average. And then you move to the right once. So you have these four values and you repeat the process. Divide by four because it's a four point moving average. That gives you an average of 4.5 which value is right in the center, or where is the center of these four values? It's right here. So that 4.5 goes here. Then you move to the right again. You take these four values, you work out the average again. The average is four the middle of those four values is right there, so that goes here. So this is how you work out a four-point moving average. And as you can see, you've got a gap here, and you've got a gap on this side, and that's perfectly normal.